All right, everyone. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you... I've got a couple of videos for you. They're not the best, but this is going to be enough for us to, to look at what I want to show you, which is how to use that video editing software. So if you copied from my, from my network folder, remember I said copy the, the three items there, I've got a, a folder there with a couple of short videos. So if you open up that video folder, and if we look at this, this one here, um, if you double click it, you're going to see it, but you're not going to hear it, that's okay. It might pop up to ask you, would you like to set your settings to custom or advanced or something? Just click the default, Just I, I can't show you here, but click on the first little box, whatever that one's called. Use default settings, is that what it says? But anyway, if you, if you then double click the video, I'm going to cut that out. <laughs> Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos, and this is my review of the new LG So I'm doing a review here, and the, the sound's not so good. So this is an LG phone that works really well on the latest... So I've got this, uh, I've got this raw video that is a, a li it's about one minute. And I want to cut it down. I want to remove that part at the beginning where I'm styling myself. And then I want to remove, remove this part that didn't really work and then add some nice music and add some text. So I'm going to take this raw video, which is okay, not really, but it's okay, and then I'm going to edit it to make it a little bit more interesting, and that's what we're going to do together, step by step. So I'm going to provide you with this video, and then together we will actually, uh, we will actually do something with this. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Windows Movie Maker, and what we're going to talk about here will translate very, very closely to iMovie. Some of the terms might be a little different and the buttons a little different, but the concept will still be the same. Because what I need to do first of all is, I need to cut out a few seconds here, so I don't start talking until about 10 seconds. So we need to cut out 10 seconds of, of, of that. And then there was a part where I, I repeated myself on purpose because I said it better the second time. I want to cut that. And then, um, like that part, and then I want to add some text and uh, fade-ins and whatever. My idea was, it didn't quite work out, but uh, my idea was I also at the same time was recording myself with another camera. So one straight on here and one at the side. So my concept is, well, if I've got these two shots, I can mix them together. Maybe at one point I'm seeing myself full on, and then I cut to a side view. That's what my idea was here, which didn't work out um, right here when I when I look at the other camera. See right here, what am I showing? I'm not even showing it. And then it's way too dark. It's really dark on my projector. It looks much better on my screen. But we can use the Movie Maker to bring up the colors as well. So this video this version of the video is pretty terrible, but this one over here is much better, and we'll talk about editing it a little bit. So you should have, you should definitely have a copy of those videos on your desktop, or if you're using your own videos, you're going to need your videos on your own folder. So then we're going to go to the Start menu, and under the Start menu, let's search for Movie Maker. Now, Windows Movie Maker is not installed by default on a Windows computer. It's free, but you have to download it. So if you've got a Windows computer and you try to search on your Windows computer for Movie Maker and it doesn't appear, I believe there's going to be a link. Yeah, it'll say, go online to get Windows Live Essentials. If you don't have Windows Movie Maker, you follow that link and it will let it download. We do have it on our computers, so once you see Movie Maker program there, click it. I forgot to cancel this out, but just click Accept. You accept the agreement. <coughs> Okay, so eventually we get this. Did everyone get Movie Maker to appear? No. 
This one, right? So this one should be up there, or is that good enough? All right, so there's lots of little screens to look at, not super complicated. We'll go through them all, but the first thing that we see here, I would recommend, if your screen is small like this, I would recommend to maximize it, to use as much of the screen as possible, because we have a lot of tools and such. My screen's a little bit smaller, more compact, but um, on the left side here, we're going to see a preview of our current video. This will show us in total what our video is. We've got play and pause and all of that for the video. Over here in a moment, we're going to add the, the video clips, and then we can rearrange them and, and so forth. At the top, we've got, if you've used, for example, Microsoft Word, this interface is a bit familiar, in which you've got this known as the ribbon, this top menu area. It says Home, Animation, Visual Effects, Project, and View. So if I jump over to Project, I get different menu items. If I go to Animations, I get different items. And we'll look at them all. We'll look at all of those screens. We're on Home. We've got some simple copy and paste features. We can copy and paste text and video. So think about this. What if you, what if you recorded a little bit of a video but you want to repeat yourself. You can copy that section of the video and paste it at the end. So then you've got the, the beginning at the end, you saying the same thing. We can copy and paste video. We're going to add some videos or photos in a moment. We're going to talk about adding music as well. You can record straight from your web camera if you've got a web camera. So many of our laptops have a web camera built in now. You don't have to go out and buy a web camera. If you are going to buy one, I recommend this one. It's not the newest one anymore, but I really like it. This is the Logitech. Let me write it down here. This is the Logitech C910. This is the Logitech C910. The newest one, I believe, is the 920, maybe even the 930, but the 910. And it was about, um, I, I bought it at Costco maybe two years ago. I think it was like $59, $69, something like that. And I've been very impressed with the quality. It shoots HD quality. The audio is very good. Uh, but just about any web camera um, could give you pretty good results. But I've had very good results with that one, the Logitech C910. And no, they don't give me a kickback mentioning them. I just like them. We can also record narration. There's a button there that if you've got a microphone, you can record yourself with narration. Well, guess what? Our web camera has a microphone, so then you have a microphone. Snapshot. Notice you hover your mouse on over any of these, and it'll give you a preview. What is this? Take a snapshot of the current frame. This is how I created that effect um, on that Italian food video, where for a moment, one of the shots it kind of flashes and then zooms into it. I took one frame of a video and made it a still photo, and then with another trick here, zoomed into it. So a snapshot is to extract a photo from your video. We can add titles. Title appears before your, your video. So just like when a movie starts and at the beginning it says Star Wars, we can put in text before our video. We can put in text after our video, the credits, just like at the end of a movie where the credits scroll up. And if we want to add text during the video, we have caption. Notice some of these are not active because we can't apply them for various reasons yet. So again, all of these, if you hover over it, explains what it does, and we'll use most of them. Auto movie themes. This is if you have absolutely no idea what to do um, but want a quick video, you can click one of these pre-made templates and it'll make a video. 
it might look like another person's video because other people could also click that same auto theme and then your video looks the same like someone else's, maybe. So uh, that's auto movie. You can actually rotate your videos, remove the videos, that makes sense. At the very end we can share directly to YouTube, upload it directly to YouTube, upload it directly to Facebook, or save it as a file. Sign in is not really necessary, don't worry about that. So any questions on this home tab here? Yes? Um, the, sorry, Vimeo? Is that what Vimeo? That's right. And what is that? It's an alternative to YouTube. YouTube is the big one for video, but Vimeo is a competitor, and it has its pros and cons, but it has a different sort of target audience. It's a little bit more snobby. Photo uh, Videos on Vimeo, oftentimes people um, put videos there that in theory are better than YouTube. There's a culture on Vimeo that these videos are better than YouTube. So you can upload directly to Vimeo. Animations. Again, all of these are not active because we don't have anything to animate. But here's where we have transitions. Here's how we have one shot of my face and then another shot sideways and I blend them together. A fade. We have a transition, and we have different kinds, little diamond shapes and blurs and mel melting water and all of this weird stuff. We can speed up or slow down our video. Sometimes I see this. There's an unboxing video or a how-to video, and instead of watching someone literally do everything like this very, very, very slowly, for a section of the video, you can speed it up or slow it down. Here's the part where if we add a photo, how can we zoom into it? How can we pan across it? It's all under pan and zoom. If I added 10 photos and I select a certain effect, then I can add all those, I can add that effect to all 10 photos with apply to all. Any questions on this tab? Again, we won't see how it looks like exactly until we add a video. Visual effects. Here's the place where we can go in to brighten up a video. We can add these effects. You can't really see them, but maybe a, a, a nice soft blur, maybe increase the colors in an interesting way, turn it black and white, so we can change the, the effect of the video as well. project. Do we want a widescreen video or do we want to go back to the 90s? So we want a widescreen video. Um, this is kind of cool. If we've got a, a song that we add that lasts one minute and we added a video that lasted one and a half minutes, we can activate fit to music and then our video will automatically adjust the duration of photos so that the movie and music end at the same time. So you've got these photos, you've got these videos, you fit to music, and then your music will play, and then your video, your visuals will end also, synchronized. And then we can have, we can have audio from our, from our video. We can have audio that I record as narration. And I can have audio that I add from a separate sound file. So I can say, emphasize the volume of my narration, or the volume of the video, or the volume of the music. And once we add something here, we will be able to mix it a little more fine-tuned, which, which volume will be louder, which one will be softer. And then under View, this is where you can zoom in, zoom out. What's the size of thumbnails? Waveform. When we have a video, we also have audio. And so we can see, we can actually see the audio, and that's great for when we want to put two videos together so that the words don't interlap, uh, overlap. Or if we want to um, see where a particular sound was recorded wrong and I can re-record it, 
So uh, usually we want this waveform on. And so okay, we've got all of these great features. And then the, the very last one at the left, I forgot to say this one, this one, um, this little tab itself there, if you click there, this is new project, open project, save, save as, publish, import from device. So in theory, if you plug in your phone with your cable and click import, it'll grab the video. But I, I don't quite do it that way because I might have a lot of videos and it takes a long time to find the right video. So the way I would do it is, like I'm telling you here, that I've, I've already put the videos that I want to work with into a folder. I put it on the desktop and I want to add those videos. So we'll come back to this screen here and then I'm going to click on click here to browse for videos and photos. I asked you to copy the, um, the videos on the desktop, so click your desktop on the left. You'll find the videos folder, double click the videos folder. For the moment I'm only going to work with the better video. The, the one that starts with WP instead of the one with bid. We're going to use the WP video. Click on that and then open. Does it matter with the file? Because I've got an AVI video I was going to work with. No, it doesn't matter. This should be able to handle just about any type of video. You load up a video, then it might tell you it's processing it. You see the little clock. You want to wait for this to finish. The longer your video is, the longer it'll pro take to process so that you can work with it. So if I add here a 10-minute video, it's going to take a while for Windows Movie Maker to, to process it. So did everyone get your video loaded? No. Anyone need a little help? Or are you just waiting? So no. just waiting. Is it under import then? All right, so if you click the play button on the left side here, the video will actually play. And then you'll see a time code. It's counting in seconds. Hello, everyone. This is Victor Campos. And, and this is my review of the new LG. Again, you're not going to be able to hear the volume. That's OK. If you brought headphones, you can plug in your headphones and, and hear it. Seven thirty. So this is an LG phone that works really well. If yours does have volume, I ask you not to play your volume because it's going to distract everyone. So um, if yours has volume, you want to click the mute button down there because it's going to be distracting. On the latest mobile carriers, 
it's very powerful. It has a 40... Okay, so let's see what we've got here. Now that I've loaded a video, many more of my options appear. So I've got a video, and notice here on the right side, this shows the whole video, and it shows little spikes. Those are the parts of the audio. That's where I'm talking. So those little spikes show where, I've, where I'm talking. There's a little black bar, which you can click and drag. Yours is probably right there on the left side. If you click and drag that little bar, notice on the left, your video fast forwards or rewinds. So we can go exactly to a certain point in the video to decide, let's cut this part out. So notice, click and drag that little black line in your video. This is called, um, what's it called? It's called jogging. You're going, you're jogging forward, you're jogging back. You're, you're fast forwarding, you're rewinding. So I'm going to take it back to the beginning. And as I said, we have this auto movie theme. Right now, this one has no... It, it's default, it has no extra style, but if you put your mouse on top of that second one, for example, don't click it, just put your mouse on it, and it shows you a preview. This is then automatically adding a cool little title. Did you see that? If you hover your mouse, my movie. If you hover over that, it automatically gives you that effect. So these movie themes are quick ways to start for, for you to start to create a video. And you get a preview. Out of most of these effects, you get a preview by simply putting your mouse on top. Not clicking, that's to actually select it. But if you put your mouse on top of these effects, they'll give you a preview. And I've got these four right here, but actually I've got more. If you click on this little, this little down arrow with the line, click on that, you have a few more. You've got this pan and zoom, you've got a black and white, you've got a sepia tone. So see my video, this is in memoriam. So clicking on that little triangle there gives you more, more effects. Well, let's say I don't want to use any of these pre-built ones. I have the options, some options here to work with first of all. So maybe I want to add first a title. Click on um, click on title. <clears throat> this is the thing that's a little confusing, unfortunately. We have the main tabs at the top, and then we have brand new tabs that appear depending on what you're working with. I didn't mention it a moment ago, but we had a brand new video tools tab that wasn't there before. We'll look at it in a moment. And now we've got a text tool tab. So depending on what you're working with, if I'm working with text, I have a brand new text tools tab. If I've got a video selected, I've got a brand new video tools tab. If I'm working with my audio, I'll have an audio tab. So that's one thing to, to pay attention to and get used to. Which tab am I working on? Because you might say, well, where did I see him add that special effect? Which tab? I don't see the tab. Well, you don't have the video selected, probably. But here on the text tool tab, now I have all of these options copy and paste text, choose a font and a size, transparency and centering, edit the text, how long does this last, what kind of effect. So right now it's got this effect, the zoom in small, it starts off as small text and then it zooms in larger. I've got zoom in big, it gets even bigger. I've got cinematic burst. Now I'm famous. Effect. And then again, this one has many more. If you click on that More button, I have lots of them. Can you believe this is free? 
so um, we have all of these different effects just for text. So what I'm going to write here, uh, a title, is um, this is going to be a review kind of video. Remember I, I had those six kinds? This is going to be a review video. So in this text I'll write LG 730 review. I have here many things. This is this is many things I could write here. Um, different fonts, different styles, what to write here. It's very open-ended. But of course, this this is the first few seconds of your video. Tell people what your video is going to be about. Um, you're going to tell them, then you're going to show them, then you're going to tell them again. So I'm telling them. Very straightforward. This is the LG 730 review, and I'm going to show them in my video. Then at the end, I'm going to tell them again. So I type this, and notice it automatically went to two lines here. I want it in one line. I want it spread across one line, not two lines. So this box, you can click the edge of the box and stretch it out so that it fits on one line. It's not centered anymore. So if you stretch the left side also. So stretch the left side of that box all the way to the left and the right so then it's centered. Click on that little box on the edge, drag it all the way to the left, all the way to the right, and now your text is centered. Let's say that font's a little boring. So at the top, it's the Segoe font. Segoe? Sego. You can go up here and change it to something else. Pristina, Onyx. So you can choose different fonts. Magneto, Magneto, Impact. You can choose any font, any size, any color. You can play with that on your own. I'm not going to go through every single detail. That's for you to explore. But maybe choose a font, maybe the color, whatever. You've got alignment as well. This text will last seven seconds. So think about this. This is another stumbling block for beginners. I don't know how long to display my text. Here's my advice. If you can comfortably read your text three times, then it's, a, then it's been there enough time. So if I, if I play my video so far, LG 730 review, LG 730 review, LG 730 review, okay, it's there long enough. But if I had, for example, the text My LG 730 review by Victor Campos. My LG 730 review by Victor Campos. My LG 730 review by Victor Campos. My LG 7, and that's fading away. So to decide how long to put text, try to read it three times. And um, if you're able to comfortably read it three times, then you've got it there for long enough. It always happens to people because you, you've heard it a thousand times in your head, and you've written it, and in your mind it lasts long enough. In your mind, the vi your text is there enough time. Read it out loud, and you're going to see that you're wrong. You're probably going to need a little bit more time. So what I'm getting at is, if my title is that long, you can set your text duration right here. Seven seconds might not be long enough. You can easily click text duration and put it ten seconds. The default that it gives you is usually seven seconds, and usually that's good. Usually that's plenty. So we've got that text. Click the play button. So see, in my case, it shows with 10 seconds, it actually goes over my head. Well, maybe I want that. It might look interesting if the text is still visible while my face is there. Do you see there? There's your, there's your text. My text lasts this long, and it goes past the plain black background into my video. Notice if I click on the black text, the black shape, 
I select it and it has various tools. And if I click on my video, it selects it and it has various tools. And if I click on my text, I select it and it has various tools. So this is the complication now when we deal with video. We have different pieces. We can have audio, we can have video, we can have colors and text. So you have to remember, what did I click on? What did I select? Right now my text is selected. How can I tell? It's got a little box around it. Now my video is selected. Do you see the box? Now the black shape is selected. You see the box. So once you start to select on different pieces and I want to go back to edit the text, here's another little confusing thing. My text tab went away. I want to go back to edit the text. So click on your text object and then the text tab appears, edit text. So I can spend four weeks talking about Windows Movie Maker. We have one day. but we have this video that you can replay several times. So if you want to go back, if you were about to ask me, how do I edit my text? I just told you. Click your text, go to the text tool, edit text. So I'm going to keep it as a short title, simply LG 730 Review. You can put whatever you want. Okay, so as I said, there's about 10 seconds where I'm getting ready and then I actually start talking. Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos, and this is my review of the new... And I can see that right here. There's the wave form. Those little spikes are my voice. On the bottom right corner, this makes it a lot easier for me, so I recommend this to you. We're zoomed out. We're halfway zoomed in, halfway zoomed out. Let's click the plus sign until we zoom all the way in. We're just dragging. Let's click the plus to zoom all the way in. What that does is it changes your little preview thumbnails right there. And it also zooms you in so you can see almost every word. There's hello, everyone. So zooming in really helps me when I need to edit these videos because that way I can more precisely select something, cut something out, rearrange things. So let's zoom in all the way. It, this video itself still lasts one minute seven seconds. But this is just me zooming into my thumbnails so I can better go to the right spot, like right here. Press play. Hello everyone, this is Victor Campo. Right. If I drag the, this is called the playhead, that little black line. If I drag the playhead to right when the, right when the audio starts, it tells me that that's at about 16 seconds. So I've got all of these seconds where I'm just styling myself and no one needs to see that. So I want to cut that out. So if I move the playhead to right before the video starts. And then up on the Video Tools tab, click on that Edit Video Tools tab we have set start point. This is going to cut out everything before where my playhead is at. So I put my playhead, I actually want my video to start right there. So on your video tools edit tab, click set start point. It's the top right icon. And notice it trimmed out everything to that point. So visually, I can see here that it, it starts at that point. 
what I usually do when I make some kind of edit like this, I back up a little bit. I back up to see how did the previous segment look, how does this new segment look. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bring the playhead back. This is kind of confusing here. This this is one long video, yes, but it ended right here. The playhead is right here. So if I keep pressing, if I keep dragging it to the left, you know, it, it ends right there. The confusing thing just is that, well, it continued up here. So if you if you click somewhere up on top here, the, the playhead follows you. So you can also click on a spot to jump the playhead there. You don't always have to drag it because at a certain point you 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 end you 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 ended the row. I can't go back further. But if you click, it jumps the playhead. So what I'm saying is, when I make some kind of edit, I back up the playhead a little bit, and then I play it from that point to see if it flows like my like my vision is. Let's see. I'm gonna click play. Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos, and this is my... That's fine. You know, I start talking right away. That works pretty well, but if I decide to do it a little bit differently, if we make a mistake on Microsoft Word, what do you usually do? Undo. Usually undo. We can undo here as well. We've got that back arrow. Undo. Or Control z on the keyboard. Yes? So, when you set start point, when you do that set start point, it does cut and remove everything before that point. Okay. So we're going to instead talk about splitting, which is probably what you want to do. We'll get to that. So again, start point will cut everything before it. And we also got set end point. So let's say we've got the end of the video and I'm and I looked out the window for some reason. I want to cut that out. So if we put our playhead on the part I no longer want, at the end of the video, I can click set end point, but again, be careful, that cuts out everything. I've just cut out 40 seconds of my video. We're going to talk instead about splitting a video because we might want to show something, then show something else, then back to the first thing. That's different. Start, uh, start point and end point are two, like taking scissors and cutting pieces away that you no longer want. They're gone. So what I'm going to do... That's what I'm going to do, exactly. I'm going to undo that and it brings it back. Because what I want to do is actually... I don't want to cut it exactly when I start to talk. I want to back up a little bit, then I start to talk. How much? Well, that's when I drag the playhead to figure out where. Maybe I want to start a little bit back here. Set start point, back up a little, and play. Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos. And this Either of those two would be fine. That I start talking right away, or that I have a little bit of a pause to compose myself, and then I start talking. Either one of those ways will work. It's up to you to decide which one you like better. Raise your hand if you liked it when I started to talk right away. Raise your hand if you liked it when I had a little pause first. Okay, so it's no right or wrong answer. What I could do here is, notice we've got the, we've got the black screen and the text and then we've got, right away, suddenly me. Hello everyone, this is Victor Camp. I could fade in instead first. Let's try this. If you, if you click at the beginning of the video, and then you go up to animations, we have then these different transitions, these different blends that will happen between the previous clip and the current clip. The previous clip is all of this text, and then the, the next clip is my face. So there's one clip, then another clip. But what happens is, between the two clips, it just suddenly happens. I want a transition. So if I say, at this point here, instead, I want something like that. Hello. Or like that. Hello. Or like that. Hello. I don't know. I don't like that the that the hid it down 
here, but the one I use all the time is in is is right here. If you click the more button, there's none, there's diagonals, and then there is dissolves. And this one of these two are the ones I use Hello. all the time. This blur one, the, this little white one, or that little black one, those are the ones I use all the time. Hello. That's usually what you see, isn't it? Hello. A kind of a blur like that. You never really see these diamonds and then these weird like pixelation Hello. thing and this blob. Hello. So these two that I use all the time are on the second row. Hello. Hello. I'm going to choose blur. You can choose whatever you want or none. And then so now you have this this sort of ramp that shows it started on this clip and it went into this clip and there was a transition in between this blur. So now if I back up and play it. Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos and this so now I've got that blur, that fade. I think I like that a little better than just the suddenly appearing. Hello, everyone. That's part of the reason, also, why I did undo to give myself a little bit of space before I started talking. I knew I was going to add a transition, and a transition blends two clips together. And so it's going to take a little bit of one clip and a little bit of another clip and blend it. So if I had cut my clip right to the moment I'm talking, this blur would have started to happen while I'm talking, and it might have been, it might have been removed. So transitions take some amount of time, so that's why I gave myself a little time beforehand. And notice we can set a transition, and how long does it last? And if I'm going to be cutting from different clips over and over and over, I can make this be like my default transition if I click Apply All. Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos, and this is my review of the new LG 730. So this is an LG phone that works really well on the latest mobile carriers. It's very powerful, it has a 40 megapixel camera and can take amazing HD photos. It's got this liquid metal. So there's a part here where I turn to the other camera which my idea was that, but then it didn't quite work out. So I want to cut out that whole part. I want to cut it out so I have to figure out liquid metal alloy. It's got this liquid metal alloy body. All right, so at about here, and then at about here, I want to cut all that part out. So I turn to the to the other camera, that's not so good. So between here and here or so, I'll tell you exactly where in a moment. But that's my concept. I want to cut out a piece between the video. So our our times are not going to be synchronized depending on what effects and all of that that we've created. So I'm going to tell you a time that I'm at, but it might not be the same as yours. So if it's not the same, don't literally do what I'm doing because you're going to cut it wrong. But you're going to look at your video and figure it out on your on your own. But let's see, I've got a spot right here. Liquid metal. Okay, so at about here, and mine it's 30.63. Approximately there, 30.60. somewhere where I kind of look like that. At that point, what I want to do is split the clip. I want to have play a certain amount, split it so that that part ends, but not delete anything. And then the next part plays, I split it there, and then the next part plays, and then the part in the middle, I remove it. So let me show you first, and then we'll do it together. I'm, I've determined that I'm going to split it here, so on my video tool, I click Split. So then I determine 
here, I want to pick it up again, so I'll click split again. Again, we'll do this together in just a moment. But I've split now. This is the good part. Split the bad part. Split the good part. Once I've got that separation, I can click on the bad clip that I don't want and just press delete on the keyboard. And now when I play it, it's got this liquid metal body and it has the latest. So I took out that whole section that I didn't want. Question? You can see that you click that out. Is there a way to make it the transition from one slide to the next smoother so it's not so obvious? Yes. Liquid metal body. I'll show that in a moment. Let me show what I did to everyone because I went through it quickly and then I'll show it. We're basically going to add another transition. Let me back up just to show that again. We need to determine where the video, where one part of the video ends to split it. Alloy. This liquid metal alloy. So, so about there or so. Uh, I said it was at about 3060, right? So somewhere there click the split button. It's in the video tools tab. Split. And then alloy box liquid metal liquid metal alloy so maybe at 3630 or so, I split it again. And so now we've got a clip in the middle. This clip, a clip in the middle, and then another clip. So this clip that I don't want anymore, I can click on it. Make sure you're selected the right one. It highlights it. It went here, ended here. If it's selecting way too much, be careful because you're going to delete too much. I split it here and I split it again here. Then select the clip in the middle and then on the keyboard simply, simply press delete. Delete on the keyboard. So once I've selected the clip, you want to click delete, and it deletes it. HD photos. It's got this liquid metal alloy body, and it has liquid metal alloy body. All right. So then the question was, okay, I might see the I might see the split. I might see it goes from one clip to the other. Maybe a little too jarring. So one thing that we could do. Um, is you go back to video, you go back to animations and then select alloy one of these metal, bot, alloy liquid metal bot, one of these transitions alloy metal, alloy liquid, metal and then set it to be really short this liquid metal alloy body so I've selected, this is the before, this is the after, the starting clip, the ending clip. I selected the ending clip because it added it to the beginning here. I selected that one. I selected then the transition, the animation of transition Alloy. blur. Once I've selected that, yeah. then I selected the smallest time here. The default time took too long. You saw that it, it was even more obvious and sounded a little weird. So I could then select the shortest time. This liquid metal alloy body. So that's one way. You use a transition to kind of hide the seams. I personally liked the way that it was without any transition. So if I take it back. HD photos. It's got this liquid metal alloy body. 
we know, and we're our own harshest critics with this, we know how the original video was. We're going to play this over and over and over. We're going to see it for hours on end. We know where the seams are at. But when you upload this, no one's going to notice these, these little things. So I would recommend, instead of fretting over every little thing, maybe get the idea down and so forth, show someone that has not been working on the video and see if they react. See if they said, oh, there's a transition there. They, they probably won't. They're going to see the whole thing brand new. They're going to say, good job, this works really well. If then they, they see, oh, I kind of noticed something weird there, then maybe take a moment to really edit it and massage it. But I guarantee you, you're going to be your own harshest critic because you know how the original video is. You've been staring at this a long time. You've been getting frustrated, and you're going to see all the seams. Other people are not. We've done a lot of hard work, but what have we not done? We haven't saved it. So, before we go any further, you've got a little save disk, save project at the top left, little floppy disk. Go ahead and click save project up there, that icon, little purple floppy disk. It says, where would you like to save this? Let's save it on that same folder, that same video folder where the videos are at. So on your videos folder, you're going to save this project. What's the file name? We'll call it LG730 Review. Uh, I would recommend no spaces. You can use dashes. You can use capital letters if you want. LG730 Review. The cool thing is that once we upload this to YouTube, it'll automatically take that name and put it on the video title. LG730 review.wlmp, Windows Movie Maker Project. I don't know where the W comes from. I mean, the, the L. But now we're saving this project. This, this project, we're saving it to, the, um, to that folder. So my, my folder here has my original video clips and this video project file. Your original video clip is not being altered in any way. It's still the original one minute long. Even when I do a split, even when I do uh, a trim and all of that, the original videos are not being edited. Any modern video editor software will do this. So your original is not being damaged. All of that data is being saved in your project folder here. And it has the latest processor. And it has the latest processor. Alloy body. And it has the latest body. So that could be the same thing here. I said this thing twice, and I might want to um, have one version. I might repeat myself, and then I change the clip. So body. It looks like if I select here, split, and it has the latest processor, and it has the. So there's another piece here that I want to trim out where I repeated myself, so I split it. I'll split it here, and then I'll delete the part I don't want. You're going to be doing some of these things over and over, like split and set start point and so forth. So instead of going up to the menu to keep selecting them, there's a couple of simple keyboard shortcuts. Every time you want to split, notice if you hover your mouse over split, just press the letter M make a split. Maybe that's how you can remember it. M for make a split. So wherever I want to split, just press, just put your playhead there, press M instead of going up to the button. 
wherever you want to set a start point, that one's I. So like uh, into the video, whenever you're going to come into the video, you press I, which is the same as pressing the start point. When you're going to go out of your video, set the end point, O. That's how I remember it. So when I want to uh, remove a part at the end, put the playhead, press O. Simply O on the keyboard. So be careful. So not, not control O? <laughs> exactly, that's what I was going to say. Be careful. It's just the letter O. It's not control O. So if you're not paying attention and you think you're on your email and you start pressing open, you just cut out something. So it's not keyboard, it's not with a control anything, it's just the letter. So here if I press M, I'm going to mark, I'm going to make a split, and then I can delete that part. Liquid metal alloy body, and it has the latest processor. So this is a highly recommended device, it can let you do everything that you need and more. So thank you for watching. camera and can take amazing HD photos. It's got this liquid metal alloy body and it has the latest processor. So this is a highly recommended device. It can let you do everything that you need and more. So thank you for watching. So then maybe I don't want that, that part in there where I'm kind of like flipping it around and such. Maybe I do. I'm just showing you then. I can easily go in and, and, and split clips a little bit more and then take out parts that I might not want. Again, yes, we are going to see kind of like a jarring from one angle to another. That is a style of YouTube videos, a style of a quick cut from this to this to this. You may not want to do that. You may want nice flow... Um, shots all the time, you're going to have to set up to do a video that way because all the, the animation of the blur and such is not always going to, to help you or, or save you. So this is when you have to decide um, what, how you can cut it or what you can do to blend them and is this effect a good effect? Does it work? Is it part of my target audience? And more. So for example, I'm going to cut out that part, and yes, there will be a, a jarring transition, but I want that. I want that style. So it'll look like this. It can let you do everything that you need and more. Oops, I forgot to delete. It can let you do everything that you need and more. So thank you for watching. So if I want to do it that way, I can. If I don't like it after all, I can undo it. I do want to cut out at the end. So thank you for watching. Well, I may want to cut it out. But I'm going to add... Um, I'm going to add the titles. If I go back to home, I'm sorry, not title, credits. If I go back to home, go back to home and click credits, simply click credits, so I know I can write whatever I want here, but this is one way. Um, I'm going to write LG 730 review. I'm going to press enter several times. This is going to be like those credits that scroll at the end of a movie. So if you press enter to give yourself more space, you know, it's going to scroll up. So what I like to do is press enter to, to kind of push that text near the top, and then I can write something else by Victor. Press enter to push that up again. vmcompost.com. Whatever in the credits I want to 
to show. Press enter some more, push that up there. Copyright 2015. If you want to make the copyright symbol, see how I did this, this copyright symbol? On Windows, it's a, it's a five key keyboard combination. Let me show you first, then we'll do it. I have to hold Alt, and then on the number pad, not the number row, the number pad on the right, I hold Alt, and then I press 0, 1, 6, 9. And then I let go of Alt. Do that again? Yes. Hold Alt, and then on the number pad on the right side, don't let go of Alt until I say, press 0, 1, 6, 9, and then let go of Alt. Get the copyright symbol. On the Mac, it's something like Command C. No, it's like Alt option, uh, Command Option C, something like that. I have to look, look it up for the Mac. But um, here now I've added some um, some text, like an actual look at that, like actual scrolling, actual scrolling text. Alt zero one six nine. So thank you for watching. So now, if, I, if I'm at this point, we're going to take a break very soon, but if I'm at this point, uh, we've been pressing play the whole time, and what happens there is it plays from the moment your playhead is at. A keyboard shortcut to get the play quickly is the space bar. So if you click somewhere and then just press space bar, so it plays. Is a highly recommended press device. space bar again, it pauses. So you've got all these great tools and such, but I really recommend, as soon as possible, remem rem the keyboard shortcuts mm -hmm. to move your mouse again up here and down here again and here over here, carpal tunnel. And so if you memorize some of these keyboard shortcuts, space bar starts to play, space bar stops to play. So if you click somewhere here, space bar play, processor. So this is a highly recommended space bar stop instead of going back and forth to play and stop. So this play, or spacebar, stops and plays at the moment your playhead is at. Now I want to get like a big overview. How is my video looking so far? If you click this little expanding button, it'll show your video full screen to get from the beginning to show you this is what your video looks like in total. So that has a keyboard shortcut of F11, preview full screen. So I didn't, rem I didn't, I don't have that one memorized. Now I will. So any of these that might have a keyboard shortcut, just put your mouse on top of it, and it'll tell you what the keyboard shortcut is. This one seems to be F11. And the device, it can let you do everything that you need. Alloy body, and it has the latest. Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos, and this is my review of the new LG 730. So this is an LG phone that works really well on the latest mobile carriers. It's very powerful, it has a 40 megapixel camera and can take amazing HD photos. It's got this 
liquid metal alloy body and it has the latest processor. So this is a highly recommended device. It can let you do everything that you need and more. So thank you for watching. Oh, you can press the escape key um, when it's playing big like that. You can press escape on the top left corner to, to stop it quickly. Or you can click on the button on the top right, back to Movie Maker. Hello, everyone. And you can also use the, the space bar here. This is Victor Campos, and this is my review of the new L. And then escape on the keyboard to take you back quickly. I'm going to save this. Uh, we'll take our break, and maybe you want to experiment with this a little bit more. We still want to do a few other things. Um, maybe add some music. So I'll show you how to do that. Um, so it's 11.48-ish. Uh, Let's come back at 12. We'll go on. So in the last hour, we'll show channels that upload these to YouTube. Yes, exactly.